Welcome back to the Taikin Ramen channel. Today we are trying something new, and rather than just covering a recipe, we're going to be talking about the history, chemistry, and characteristics of tonkotsu. Outside of Japan, I found most people have never heard about the rich backstory or complicated construction of this classic ramen dish, and today we're going to explore all of it together. At its base, tonkotsu is a bone broth soup. Bone broth soups have been around since roughly 500 years BCE, which places them about 2,400 years before the original Godzilla. Originally documented in China, these soups were consumed for medicinal purposes, and flourished in popularity with the establishment of the Silk Road, evolving from medicine into cuisine over time. The prevalence of bone broth soups in Chinese culinary culture permeated into Japan through a variety of Chinatowns that popped up in Japan during the early 20th century. As bone broths spread into cuisine, Japanese restaurants started adapting the concept, trying to put original spins on the soup. There are competing stories about the first tonkotsu, but one shop has claimed that they created the original recipe. In 1937, in the southern city of Kurame, Japan, a man named Tokyo Miyamoto opened a shop called Nankin Senryo, selling the pork bone broth for its rich, meaty flavor. The soup was named tonkotsu directly after the Japanese words pork bone, and the novelty of Miyamoto's creation was a hit. Miyamoto's shop is still open and operated by his family on Meiji Street in Kurame, and you can stop by today to try the recipe that they claim is the original tonkotsu. Tonkotsu began to circulate throughout the South, and it became especially prevalent at fishing markets and among the working class who recognized the dish to be cheap and filling. During the Second World War, tonkotsu grew in relevance as a food that made use of the bones that had previously been considered food scraps. From humble beginnings, the soup became a part of a way of life and a cultural identity as it spread throughout the country. After the war, tonkotsu made its way all across Japan, about 10 years after the creation of tonkotsu, Katsumi Sugino-san, the founder of Senkyu Ramen Shop, accidentally overcooked the tonkotsu, finding it only after a long, intense boil and seeing it had been transformed into liquid gelatin. Though originally dismayed, Sugino-san seasoned and served the soup and was delighted to find a deeply enhanced umami flavor. He probably didn't know it at the time, but he had created an emulsion that was destined to take Japan by storm. This brings us to part two, the chemistry of tonkotsu. Emulsification is the process of combining two immiscible substances. Tonkotsu is an emulsion of fat suspended in pork flavored broth. It literally flies in the face of the old expression that oil and water don't mix. Bones are especially well suited to the task of creating emulsions because marrow is rich in fats, chemically known as lipids, and the bone itself contributes a molecule called collagen which works as a chemical emulsion stabilizer. To simplify the chemical reaction, lipids are hydrophobic, which means they don't like water. Chemically, that is due to the fact that lipids are nonpolar and water is polar. Collagen, however, is made up of a chain of many amino acids braided together, with some polar and some nonpolar areas. This means that if the water is heated and agitated enough, large globs of fat can be broken into tiny little fat bubbles over time, and then the collagen can suspend those little fat particles among the water molecules, kind of like Sandra Bullock got suspended floating through space and gravity. Do you copy? Yes, 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 I copy, I'm just tapped. I, I, I don't know, I don't know, I'm spinning, I can't, I can't. Your uh, position. GPS is down, I can't, it's down, I can't. Uh, Give me a visual. Uh. Another reason pork bones rock is that if you cover them in water, they will roughly have the correct ratio of water to fat to collagen to make an emulsion happen over a long boil, normally about 12 hours. In a lot of ramen recipes, you will see additives like pig or chicken feet, or sometimes pig skin. Adding animal parts that have joints is a good way to boost collagen, while adding skins or lard will increase the fat content. This opens up a lot of opportunity for adding elements that make the soup more or less fatty and more or less viscous, but we can explore that a little later. When emulsifying pork bones, chefs will work hard to clean their bones, 
because raw pork bones are rich with blood, which would give tonkotsu an undesirable iron flavor. Rather than trying to scrub the bones clean, covering them in water the night before boiling them will draw the blood out through a process called osmosis. Blanching the bones in clean water for 5 minutes will also eliminate residual unwanted flavors. So to recap, the life cycle of the soup is that raw pork bones soak in water which draws the blood out of the bones. Then the bones are blanched and subsequently boiled for 12 hours. During that 12 hours, the bones release lipids and collagen into the water. Through heat and movement, the lipids are broken into tiny particles that the collagen then suspends in the water, which results in an animal gelatin. Although it's not the most appetizing thing to see, one way to know if an emulsion was successful is to try to scoop it at room temperature. If done correctly, the tonkotsu is like a jello when it's not heated up. Now that we know what's going on under the hood, let's take a bigger picture look at what tonkotsu should taste, look, and feel like. All of that work that went into the emulsion should give the soup viscosity. It is commonly referred to by critics as the mouth feel of the soup. That's just a high level way to describe how greasy or lean a soup is, and how viscous or watery a soup is. Tonkotsus are traditionally made to be thick like cream, which makes them opaque. In Japanese cooking, an opaque soup is called a python, while a clear soup is called a chintan. Tonkotsus are generally very fatty soups, which is ironic. It's ironic. Since the origin was essentially a health food back in the day. By adding additional fat or collagen elements before boiling, tonkotsus can be made more or less viscous and more or less fatty. In terms of color, before seasoning, tonkotsu is traditionally a bright white color. Having a nice white soup is sort of like a little guarantee that the chef got all of the blood out before boiling. As far as flavors go, tonkotsu sort of tastes like liquid bacon to me. Of course, as a basic broth, it isn't seasoned, so it's mild initially, but you can make it into anything you like really. The broth itself is supposed to have a depth of flavor, which means it should be strong but smooth and linger with you after you try it. The magic of the soup really is the versatility. Whether you're making shoyu, tantan men, miso, or any other kind of ramen, tonkotsu has your back. Thanks for joining me today. I really enjoyed learning a little more about tonkotsu, and hopefully now you know something new. What ramen topic should we dig into next? Let me know with a comment below. See you all next time. Please consider subscribing for more.